Getting consistent AI characters can be pretty challenging, but today we're going to show you how to get great results without any complicated LoRa training using just Midjourney and Runway Gen 4 references. We're going to use this short film called Instinct from Marcelo Costa as an awesome example, and there are three things in this film I want to highlight. The main one is the character consistency, of course, with this Neanderthal character. Second, there's an impressive camera technique in this fast-paced opening sequence. And finally, the fantastic sound design that ties it all together. The story follows a Neanderthal who discovers a mysterious modern building in the woods and leaves changed forever. It's a great film, and Marcelo is here with me today to walk me through how he pulled it off. Let's dive in. Hi. You must be our 1030. They're ready for you. Chair. Chair. Sit. 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 Now. Get a job. Buy a car. Be productive. Work hard. Get a program. Pay your taxes. Save money. Smile. Exercise. Buy. Go to church. Be healthy. Climb buy. the ladder. Get a hairband. Have a beer. Travel. Buy. Work harder. Make money. Spend. Buy. Raise a family. Have some decency. Be somebody. So the idea for this film, I, I, you know, it kind of just came to me, but I had this idea in my mind of the a skyscraper, a glass skyscraper in the middle of the jungle. It's the first kind of starting point that I went off of um, to get the, the story going. Uh, and, you know, ideas can come in a lot of different shapes and ways. And I guess this one came from an image and a, a mood that I wanted to to talk about you know i've lived in, in big cities and now i live in a, a quieter part of the countryside so i guess it's a topic that speaks to me um on some levels at least so to get the character consistency is a process that takes a lot of building blocks um you can see that i started really small here with just a very simple prompt a portrait of a caveman in the jungle which is the foundation of my concept so to say from there i started you know doing a lot of runs at it and this was right around when mid journey released uh v7 like the same day so i was doing tests with that and then eventually i moved back to 6.1 just because that's something that i was more comfortable with so in this case for the in the case of the instinct short i used uh mid journey's 6.1 character reference 
the most to achieve consistency for the Neanderthal. At a point when I actually got my character in, I used the image that I had of him and inputted it into um, Me Journey's character reference to get the character that I wanted, which is, uh, you know, at this point, this is the first time that I actually saw my character, the character that I wanted to have. So I was doing um, videos of him and one great way to get uh, consistent characters is to actually, you know, get the one image that you have of the character that you want and animate it and then use frames from that video to get other angles of your character. Uh, in this case, for example, I had this frame, which is the character that I wanted. And when I animated it, I had I only had a frontal shot of him, but by the end of the video, I had a, a side view of the same character, which is a great way to, to get different angles and really to get to know your character so you can really be consistent with it. To be honest, I had no idea how I was going to transform this Neanderthal into the civilized man. I kind of pushed my luck there, um, made the character, and then just kind of left that problem for later. But I looked out because on the same day that I... <laughs> Uh, was getting ready to make the transformation of the Neanderthal into the civilized man. Uh, runway references came out and I actually used that and it ended up being a lot easier than I expected it to be because I had this image of the Neanderthal uh, sitting in front of the TV and I simply just inputted this into uh, mid, uh, runway references and prompted it like this simply just one single prompt and just like that i got the version that i wanted and this is the comparison between the two of them i it's just just like that it's not there's no big secret or uh, big techniques it's just one simple prompt asking ai to transform the neanderthal into a civilized version of himself that looks like himself and that people can recognize as the same character yeah, from there, you know, I just, uh, and then I used that one image that it gave me, and I used that as a reference on runway references to put that same character in different positions. So to get the camera motion going for the opening sequence, the chase sequence, it's a little bit of a process that goes through both the video, but also the image generations. Um, in this case, I tried to get motion in the images themselves so i was generating images with motion blurred backgrounds and so on images that inspired movement so that i could input that into the ai and so for example i had this shot of the neanderthal running this is something i did in mid journey and once i input that into cling it actually gave me something that's really full of depth and motion and it's it's what i wanted and more there was there were times when i didn't use that and it worked just as well so for example i used this image to get the running deer the very first shot of the the film and from that image cling gave me uh, the running deer which isn't quite the same pace as the neanderthal but then with just a little bit of fast tracking in in the editing suite i could get him to go there so basically what I did was I got I got this shot, which is one of my favorite shots of the film. And I used this as a uh, benchmark for the pace and then everything else had to respond to this. And then there's the, the thing about, you know, there's no rule or anything set in stone because I said that I, I used images that inspired motion, but not every time, you know, that is going to be something that works well. So in this case, I had this deer and you know he's really not running as much as the the still image use would inspire so it's really a matter of you know trying a lot of um things iterating a lot um changing your prompt uh trying different images and just taking the very best that you got get from your generations and uh, just editing them very lightly if need be so now I'm going to show you how I layered the uh, sound design with music to build the soundscape of the film and music and sound effects are always really important to me because they kind of like tie everything together. Uh, in this case, we have, we start with, with the score, which I did in Suno and we have a lot of sound effects, you know, there's a lot of happening in the scene uh, and it's, it's kind of easy to 
to put those sounds in because you can actually see that you're running. You can see him brushing against leaves and things like that. There's the footsteps. When you have something like that, it's it's really not that much of a challenge to find things to put in. I think the biggest challenge is when you don't have so much going on and then you don't want to make the that part of the film where there's not so much action feel flat. So here, for example, you can see that I have layers for the rustling of the leaves, the galloping of the deer, and then, of course, there's the... Um, the pursuit, the music, there are sounds of the forest. And this, for, for example, the sounds of the forest is just like very light chirping and birds and things like that. It's just kind of layers that you might not even hear too clearly, but they help build a, you know, robust soundscape for the film. And if you go over here, by the time that the music ends, and we get the to the part where we're out of the chase. That's that's to me. That's when the the real challenge begin because now you don't have the footsteps. You don't have you know the the high tension uh, uh, scenes that kind of seem to demand the specific kind of sound. So now you really have to be creative and and find ways to fill the space. So. You know, I always kind of like to add in, you know, reverbing drone sounds, hummings, uh, wind. Um, and for a, for a film like this, which is kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit ominous. So I always kind of have an underlying hum going on, even if it's almost imperceptible. It's just that little something like, like a very... If you have just kind of like a sound that you almost can't hear, but it just kind of seems to tie everything together. It helps the film not be, you know, completely silent. And then I, I use Suno for the music and Suno gives, of course, it, it always gives you full length uh, songs. So I always kind of have to find um, my way into the music and see at which, which point I want to cut it off. And I kind of like always in, in a reverb, just a, a little touch. Um, and for sound effects, I mostly use Eleven Labs. So there's the trippy TV sequence in the film that kind of like disconnects uh, visually from the rest of the film. And this was definitely the most fun to make because it was, you know, I was a lot more free to kind of like try a bunch of tools and do things and just kind of like mesh them together into this trippy sequence um, that transforms the Neanderthal into the civilized man. Uh, so this is the only part of the film that actually had to have some work done outside of just simple editing in the Vinci. I brought it into After Effects and added all of these glitch um, TV kind of effect. And then, you know, then th this is this is where I actually went all out with the tools because I was using mostly Clink, Runway and Mid Journey for everything. But then um, I kind of took the opportunity to try a bunch of different tools here, you know, VO, uh, Luma... All of that because the images didn't really have to have a specific aesthetics or really connect to any scenes. They could be kind of like this crazy um, super edit of random images and still work. And uh, yeah, you know, thank you for the invitation to do this. I hope people will, you know, profit off of it. Of course, we could spend like days and weeks and months talking about how to make an AI, AI film and we're never going to fit everything into 10 minutes, but, you know, little by little. You can watch the entire film on our Curious Refuge AI Film Gallery. And if you want to create your own short films, advertisements, or any kind of storytelling project using AI, we teach courses that will walk you through the entire process. There are a ton of tools out there, and today's breakdown only covered a few of them. So we'd love for you to join our next cohort of courses. Thanks so much and see you next time.